even going into surgery, our number one concern was that, like, would my skull be strong enough to be able to hold the hardware needed to hold the device in place. We knew we wanted to try. Oh, friends, I wish that this wasn't a video I would be filming today, but here we are. Here I am. Today's video is going to be an update, as you can tell by the title, and not one that I wanted to film because of what it could lead to in the near-ish future. Obviously, I don't know that yet, and a lot that goes into this, but I'm going back to Ann Arbor to have the magnet in my bone anchored hearing aid switched out in the external processor. I am, when this is being filmed, I am six months and one week-ish post activation day using this device for six months and I absolutely love it. You guys know how much joy this device has brought me how freedom this device brings me and just pure joy because of what it's taken to get there and to get to this point throughout this process. I promised that I would share with you any challenges or all the ups and downs um, throughout the journey and to be honest with you, post activation day, like after activation day, I really didn't think there would be any downs because everything was such on the up and up, like kept getting better and better. And I'm kind of faced with a bit of reality possibly right now. As I've mentioned throughout this process, there's the internal piece, the internal processor that I had surgically implanted. And then there's the external processor that also has a magnet. That that magnet, it's how it sticks to my head because of the two magnets connect together internally and externally. Externally, there are six different magnet strengths for the metal bone bridge, and there's one through six, as I've shared several times throughout this process. One is the weakest, and six is the strongest. I started out with the device at a three, and then I, your audiologist, determines on many different factors what magnet you should start out at. So I started out at a three, and then it became like not tight enough because swelling after surgery affects this. So I got moved up to a four two months later, and then now two months later after that, getting up to present day, it's become too tight, the four. This is actually my third magnet strength, I apologize. So it started out at a three, and then a couple weeks later, I got moved to a four like post activation because it wasn't sitting on my head very well, and so I got moved to a four, and that lasted me a couple of months, and then I got moved back down to a three because it became too much. The reason that I knew that was because I was getting headaches. Not, I say headaches, but like it's just more like pain in where the internal pieces where the implant was surgical surgically placed. That's one of the ways that recipients know when the magnet is becoming too tight and also the swelling can continue to go down. Just because of where the surgery is, it takes a little bit longer for the swelling to go down than like a, a normal surgery. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, so I got moved down to a three, but then moving to present day with a three magnet. And honestly, since I started out at a three and then I was moving back to it, when I moved back to the three, like two months later, something like that, three months later, I don't know. I thought since I started at a three and then was going back to a three, I thought, oh good, like I'm probably done with magnet strength swapping because I'm starting back at where, going back to where I started. So my three must be the one for me, like that must be the best. And so I didn't really think anything of it when I got the three that I could possibly need to move even further down the line. So I didn't think anything of it and now we're in present day here in Ottawa and I'm going back to Ann Arbor to once again have the magnet strength swapped possibly one last time and I'll get to that in a minute but because I started getting head pain again this time it was a lot more than the first two times. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I, I don't know. The reason that I wanted to update you is because this is a bit of a, a bummer because we are running out of options of magnet strength and this continues to happen. This basically tells us that this is not a magnet strength issue. If I experience something similar again, this basically tells us that this is not a magnet strength is issue. This could be 
something wrong with the internal processor. And for me, for my case, the only logical thing that it could possibly be is one of the screws that is holding the implant in place was supposed to be. Hopefully it is, could be loose. But like I said in the beginning, throughout this process, like even before I had the surgery to get this device implanted with osteogenesis imperfecta, that is a risk. Obviously, my bone quality is garbage compared to one without osteogenesis imperfecta. The reason that I had this done is because there are other recipients with this device and other bone anchored hearing aids with osteogenesis imperfecta that it works really well for them and they've had it for many many years with no issues that gave me a lot of hope and then following a ct scan for my surgery my surgeon was able to find a really good place of some decent bone quality again oi decent bone quality just putting that out there basically enough to where she felt that the device would hold and so that's why I obviously ultimately decided to go through with the surgery because obviously like this could work well and I know of others who it has worked well and other similar devices it has continues to work well and have had for many 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 years and so I wanted to experience the joy and the freedom that they are able to receive through a device like this one and I've done many videos talking about why we chose the metal bone bridge for me and it has been such a gift and I absolutely love it. I adore it. But it has been a process. My point is from the beginning, I knew that this could be a risk, but the risk wasn't a big enough risk for me not to do the surgery. Like me knowing all the factors and just making the best decision on the information that I, that I have and that I've observed through other people, that was enough for me to decide to, to do the surgery, to have this device surgically implanted. Um, obviously, my, even throughout, with, with osteogenesis imperfecta, even within the same type of OI, everyone's bone quality is different. Everyone's bone quality in different areas of their body is different. And so just because the device worked well or works well for someone else or a similar device, works well for someone else with the same type of osteogenesis imperfecta as me, type 3. It doesn't mean that it will work well for me or vice versa work well for them depending on what bone and good hearing aid they have. And so like I said, the risk statistics in my head and again what I've observed wasn't big enough for me not to, to do the surgery. I had enough hope to where I felt like this could be sustainable and my surgeon felt the same way too, which is why I agreed to do the surgery and offered me this option that this could work for me long term and but even then we have to realize the reality with osteogenesis perfecta that there's no guarantee and obviously there's no guarantee for anybody when you're doing something surgically but when you don't have osteogenesis perfecta the idea or the thought of a screw coming loose and a bone and good hearing aid probably close to nothing if I were to guess. I've never heard of it happening with for someone without OI but again I don't know I'm not a doctor I'm just telling you like so if you if you don't have osteogenesis perfecta and you're watching this video considering a bone and good hearing aid I don't know all your other health circumstances but don't let these factors you because they don't apply you don't have osteogenesis perfecta if you don't have it so you don't need to worry about these certain risks again I don't know your other health circumstances but um, just know that this is pretty much I would say unique to Osteogenesis, osteogenesis imperfecta just because of the bone quality. I knew from the beginning that my surgeon knew like she could not even, though she's seen great success, she could not guarantee anything. Like the surgeons just don't. like for liability reasons and all of that, like obviously bioindividuality, everything works different for everyone. And that's why in medicine, it's so important for healthcare to be individualized, not mainstream because it just, it, it doesn't work that way. Like it, has to be individualized and so um i knew going into this there was a possibility that it may not work um that this it may work but in the future one of the screws could pop and the device will have to be removed i don't know but it would bottom line is it, it is it is a risk that i'm willing to endure to at least try to experience the joy and the freedom that comes from utilizing one of these devices and basically what i'm getting at is if i experience something Similar again with this magnet that I'm getting, we can pretty much assume that it's something with the internal implant. The only logical thing that it could be is one of the screws holding the device in is loose. And so
and I don't mean to be a downer. Um, I'm trying my best to hold on to hope and optimism, but the reality is like we're running out of options and I also want to preface because I know I'll get some, could the head pain be from something else, like headaches, like could that be from something else? No, because one, I don't get headaches, I just don't, I'm very grateful. Not to say that I've never had them, like I have, but they're very, very rare. And then also, it's completely localized to exactly where my implant is. So it's just, there's no other, ex like that is the answer. That's how we know this is related to the I just want to share that this is something that I am getting closer to, but we're not there yet. There's, you know, there's still other options for now, not that many. There are. I'm just doing the next step, and, and if it happens again, I'll have to have imaging of my head to confirm, of the implant, not like of my whole head, but of the implant to confirm that possibility, and so cross that bridge when we get there. Until then, um, this swapping out the magnet one more time is next step. The reason that I say one more time is because I don't think the one strength magnet will be enough. Like, there has to be some level of not pull but just grip to for the processor to be able to stick and so I truly believe that the two magnet is going to be my last option. It's a lot because I don't ever want to think about this not working for me because you guys know like what a battle this has been and how much I've worked for this and how much this means to me, how much this journey means to me. I'm trying not to go that route, like think those things, but that's just something that I have to mentally prepare for that possibility. That's just the reality with osteogenesis perfecta, like it's so unpredictable. Even within the same type, like I have friends with type 3 with a bone anchored hearing aid and it's, they've had it for many, many, many years, a different, there's different kinds and again I've talked about why I've got this kind as opposed to other kinds, like everybody has different circumstances, um, but that doesn't mean that it would work for me or them or vice versa. And so I had to, it's important for me to recognize the risks that I've decided to take with having this device. Nobody, not even my surgeon can take away that possibility. That's just the reality with osteogenesis perfecta. I just wanted to let you guys know kind of where I'm at with this and the challenge that I'm facing. So right now I can't wear the device until I get the new magnet, but it's only a couple of days away. It's really actually convenient when I started experiencing the head pain, like I knew my six month appointment was coming up. So I already had an appointment scheduled, which is really good. So I've alerted everybody on my team that like isn't going on. So they know I didn't have to set like a separate appointment because I already had one scheduled, which is really nice for my six. If everything does pan out okay and I do get this new magnet and it's great and everything. This will be my last audiology appointment for a whole year. So that's really exciting too. So if the pain continues after the new magnet strength, I basically, the audiologist that really like handles the magnet strength swapping and everything. I continue to have issues after that. I have to go back to my surgeon because there's nothing else from an audiology standpoint that they can do to make to make this work, then my surgeon will basically handle it from there because we're dealing with internal issues, um, physical, you know, internal, like, surgically placed issues. Those are kind of the next steps and things that I have to think about and hopefully don't have to think about. But for now, I can't wear the device because it's not good, like, when you start to get those, the head pain, it's not good to wear it. They recommend that you take it out because it can cause, like, something with your scalp. I I don't know. I think it's fine, I, but I don't know. I'm not gonna wear the, uh, the device because I want everything to be as fine as possible. So I'll just follow their instructions. I'm not to think about worst case scenario in this journey because, well, the other part is too. It's, the other thing too is during surgery, like my surgeon said, like she was really, really impressed with the bone quality that she was able to find to place this device. And so the thought of it, honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, because of that, the thought of, I was like, cause I mean, I know for a lot, most part, like, my bone quality is garbage. It's probably already not too bad for having a lie. So when she told me that 
how good it was and how easy the placement was and everything and how confident she was like obviously again all the same risk supply but overall confident she was like that but honestly if i'm being completely honest completely erased my thought the thought of it ever coming loose to just tell that things went well so it completely erased that possibility from my mind probably won't have to worry about it ever coming loose and here we are out of almost all the magnet strength options this could be something that we have to explore but we're not there yet and so we'll see what happens but i just wanted to share kind of like where i'm coming from and it's weird too because gosh forbid it's like it's weird because i've been using it for like a good amount of not it's been in the grand scheme of things it's still been a short time like six months it's you know but i just feel like if it if it was why would it pop up now you know like a part of oi and like the bone strength thing is like so weird and like how it just all of a sudden just decides not to hold anymore i don't know but um, i feel like there was something else i was gonna say but i guess i guess that's pretty much it there are two more things i wanted to say so my point was it's hard not to think about um the worst case scenario in this journey because in where i'm getting at with that is in this case the worst case scenario would be needing the device like let's say one of the screws is loose in the device um worst case scenario for me would would mean that this proved to us that my bone isn't able to hold the device so we'd have to surgically remove the device that would be a worst case scenario it's hard not to think about that because in this hearing loss journey i have experienced aspects of the worst case scenario like you know realizing that my hearing loss is classified as i thought it was moderate to severe but I was reading my paperwork and it's classified as severe to profound, which like profound is like one step away from being deaf, I guess. I don't know. It's classified as severe slash profound, knowing like obviously once I found my surgeon that has been amazing, like she's been able to walk with me and help me through these things. And after so many years, like finding someone who could help me, not only was my is my hearing loss so severe, but because of all the years that it went on, on like went not taken care of, because nobody knew how to help me like no other doctors no other surgeons knew how to help me because of that by the time i found her like it was too late for her to repair my hearing it, like stop the cause well she stopped the cause of the worsening hearing loss but by the time i found her like my hearing bones were already eaten away like literally eaten away but like pac-man from infection and so and then all the other worst case scenario is like because of my anatomy i wasn't able to have artificial artificial hearing bones implanted that would have that would have helped me regain some natural hearing ability without the use of any device because of my anatomy it just didn't work out and then the traditional hearing aid ended up not working out like a, just a regular in the ear type of hearing aid ended up not working for me either there's varying levels of the worst case scenario that i've experienced in this hearing loss journey so I, you know that's where my thought immediately goes because i've, I've been there in many levels of it throughout the years um, as i've been faced with these realities. I think going to wrap up this video, that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else to share because until I get this new magnet and see how it works for me, updates to come, I will definitely update you guys if things are going great or not so great. I'll definitely keep you posted, but regardless, if you could just keep me in your prayers that it will be a-okay and I will continue to be able to use this device for a decade to come and be able to experience the freedom and the joy and the independence that comes with having this device. So thank you guys so much for being along the journey with me through the ups and the downs and everything in between. You guys are incredible. Um, I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye!